or pale. I know, I know. You need to get a filter. <laughs> hey, um, what are we talking right. about this morning? All righty. Well, let me get the snapper in. Action. Good morning, yes. everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes with myself, Michael Burgio, and co-host, Mark Novak. And this morning, we're going to be talking about city agent v. local agent. What, I, what does it even mean? What is a city agent and what is the perception real or the thoughts? Uh, when, when do we see it used? And just sort of, I, I find it just comes up a lot in conversation. Uh, should I get a city agent v. local? G'day, Michael Edwards. Thanks for watching. I only felt like I just saw you. <laughs> uh, Mark, so... What's a city agent? What are people referring to? Are they talking about their postal address, where their office is, brings in buyers, or are they talking about the, the reach? Like, what what is it? Uh, I guess you could li liken it to like the the um, JLL, the CBRE, the Colliers agents that are in the big smoke. You know, like they're in yep. the CBD Sydney. Hence my background on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> people are often comparing us. Um, because um, they're, I guess they're, um, we're, we're a strongly local Northern Beaches brand. Um, yes. We're a, yeah, obviously a family owned business and, uh, and people are going, well, you know, how do you compare to the national networks if we're going to select you to, um, to sell, by, sell from? Now and I never, just, just while we, before we talk about it, I never get asked by a buyer. <laughs> mm. I, it's only ever sellers. Yes. And that would be the common thing, which I think a lot of people can relate to. G'day, Jeff, Andrew, Luke, pumping morning. Good to have you all on. Hey, guys. I think, like a lot of agents out there, I think it doesn't matter if you're Northern Beaches or you're in other pockets. I think this is a common thing sellers bring up going, well, if I'm going to list with you, why should I list with you where you only have really your local network, V international. So, um, I, I would, from my point of view, when people are saying national, they, um, it's probably the perception they believe because you always hear a lot of, um, Asian money, basically coming overseas, uh, coming and buying properties. So I think sellers are trying to, when they mean that, that's what they're looking to try and tap into this magical pool of overseas buyers. Um, is that, would that be your assumption, Mark, or like, that's where they feel these companies because they are like a JLL CBRE. They're all they're in multiple countries, so you would you I can see where they're sort of coming from. If they get offices uh, in Sydney and say Hong Kong, that they could be quite interrelated. Um, is that what they're searching for? Is that that look sort at, of a feel? I, yeah, look, I, I think it's quite it's quite um, it's quite clever because um, it can't be quantified. It can't be substantiated. It, it it's perceived value. Um, so when, um, I guess what's really interesting is, um, when you're selling a product as a salesperson, if you can sell air or perceived value, then or that's enough to raise a shadow of doubt for a client, then you've actually got something to separate yourself from the marketplace. Um, now whether that's value or, or not, not value, I think we'll go into later with some comparisons, Michael, mm. that we're pretty proud of, but that perceived value, I think is really tap. They really drill into the brain of prospective sellers to go, well, we've got this Asian network. Well, we've got this national, international network. Um, so it's actually, it's pretty, um, it's, it, I guess, um, in, in a, in a, environment at the moment particularly in the last quarter where where we are supporting australian and where we are supporting local i think it's even more to uh, important to support a domestic brand and a local brand like like us mm. um than uh, than, a, than an international brand where the money's taken offshore and just off what you said there mark that perceived to put in a bit of context uh for someone out there it, it, it would be, let's say I um, work for, a, a, say, CBRE, for example, how I would use that perceived value would be you're sitting with the, the, the people who are selling and you, you're sort of just playing the tune of we've got these offices in America, Sweden, Hong Kong. We talk all the time. There's thousands of buyers overseas um, that only we have um, access to. They pay huge money. You need this. 
that's why you're going with us. No other local agent can provide these buyers, basically. That's the pitch. Would you agree? Is that what you... Mark? Well, that's it. That's I guess for, for anyone who's just tuned in, what we're talking about is the difference between a local brand and a and an international brand when it comes to yep. commercial particularly. And we're talking about when people are selecting to rent their property or selecting to sell their property, the pros and cons, we're probably as biased as hell, but we're going to try not to be. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, but but we'll put it in a bit of context as well. And if you're other, I know a lot of agents here, uh, are tuning in maybe hopefully there's something here we can some tools we've used um to help secure the business as the local agent but also yep. i genuinely genuinely believe that the local agent is the is the the better choice to represent your property and we'll go through those examples there so for me it's more yes overcoming Hey, lisa good to see you tuning in um it's it's not just um, obviously to secure the business, but it's in their best interest as the, the vendors when they're selling because we've just seen it come out better. And what, so let's put it, what that international, that perception of the, those buyers overseas, the power of a local agent, as Michael Edwards says, knowledge is power. I, I feel when people yeah, are looking to buy a property, they're more interested in if that agent can supply the data of what's selling in the area, the trends in the, in the local market. Um, we all know there's markets within markets. Like we all know in our suburbs where if you're on the Eastern side of Pittwater road, you're 5% better in price and on the Western side and things like there's always these little trends and things in the market where, uh, an agent who's not from that local area just won't know. And that's what I find a lot of buyers find more powerful. As you said, Mark, buyers, they don't really care. Like, I just see that's where the gap is from a city agent. They may introduce a couple um, a couple buyers from overseas, but keep in mind, those buyers overseas still have access to the largest portals to buy property, oh, so they're there. They do, and I've got to tell you, like, where Northern Beaches covers um, Spitbridge all the way up to to, um, to Palm Beach. We are, like, if you looked at if you looked at all of the sales that have been done um, in any of our core suburbs with Novak and without Novak, because um, you sort of know who bought, what bought, where they're from and stuff like that, it's very, very, very domestic. It's very Sydney-based. It's very Northern Beaches based. Um, you know, there's a statistic that came out from News, News Limited, which was 85, 90% of people are coming within a 10 kilometer range when they buy real estate. So it's local, super important. And you know what else, Michael? When I want to, when I want to consume something, when I want to compute, when I want to consume a product. Yep. Sorry. Jesus, who's that? Um, when I when I want to when I want to consume a product. I want to, um, I want knowledge. So if I'm going to walk into a car dealership, if I'm going to go and buy a television, I want to know all about the television or all about the car. Do you know what I mean? I, that local yeah. knowledge that you're referring to, I think is absolutely critical when you're, critical when you're banging out 500,000 or a million or 2 million. Do you know what I mean? You want to know yeah. everything about that area. 100%. And I think that's where, and I reckon it would go, Luke, uh, Jeff would love your feedback. Like, Jeff, where do you see a lot of your buyers coming from? Would you say 90% of the buyers or 100 or 50% of the buyers that your office is dealing with, would you say they live within a 10 kilometer radius? Um, because, as Mark said, that's what is on the northern beaches. So when clients come to us looking to sell and they sort of throw out that city agent v local, not, nearly all the transactions are done to local buyers and they feel a lot more trusted when there's a local agent who knows the local dealings and what selling and leasing for as well. Like a big part in commercial property is the rent and that value of the rent of the tenancy. And even if you're, if you're coming from outside to sell the property, you, may, you can probably find out what's sold uh, within the radius to use as comparables. But the most powerful thing is being as an agent, being able to say, that's the rent of the property and that's what the last 10 properties around it um, have leased for. Like that data is 
you just can't really get that. It's not special commercial right. where it's not as up to date as Resi, where there's Absolutely. everything displayed. So give me some examples. So um, I think across the road from our office was a phenomenal example. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we brought on uh, two new buildings, uh, 200 units, uh, 130, 70 and one, and then they had 12 uh, retail shops. We had done a lot of, the client basically wanted um, a, a national agent on it because of all the overseas buyers, just had that real perception and the big brand. Um, but he also knew we did 80% of the deals in that suburb. So we did a conjunction we touched on that structure yesterday um in our minutes the types of sale so, and so we that, did so that just, just just to just just to explain what that is they wanted to award it but with it so they wanted to give the agreement to sell the property and the tools to sell the property to two different agents so we had the yes. same tools yeah we had the same ad we had the same benefit of uh, real estate dot, real commercial we had the same benefit of real commercial uh, we had the same benefit of portals, uh, social yeah. media, and database. And one Everything. one was a was a, an international agent, which the perceived value to the seller was real, um, and uh, and that's why they wanted to use them. But then the perceived value to the seller with us was also very real and very apparent because they knew we mm. were doing majority of the deals in the northern beaches in sales. Yes. And we ended up selling, well, now we've sold, I think it was 14 shops, we've sold 13. 13 out of 14 local agent v. city agent. But and, the 14th one was our buyer anyway. Yeah, and that was a cross one. Um, so we had dealings with that. So where why we're bringing this up is, <laughs> one, to give ourselves a pat on the back, but two, <laughs> it was a strong learning to actually see it live and be in it that in that context because a lot of the time it's city v local and they give it to one agent and you really don't you don't get to know if what would have done better you know mark like you just see it listed with one and it's sold and you're like oh what what if what if so to be head to head and from with the same tools and just dominate with that and the reason i, I know we like sold it also, like, I guess you question yourself as well, Michael. Like, yeah, you know, anytime you go into battle, um, whether it, whether it's in a in a boxing ring, or or whether it's in in a debate, or whatever that's going to be, you all a, a, a tennis game as a professional Novak Djokovic giddy up. You know, I think you always back yourself, confidence with yourself, but yeah. you know, you you know, you got a competitor. Um, yeah. So you you always want to make sure. So it was it was for us. It was uh, it was. Yeah, we, you know, we were um, we're really guarded and really on, on point. And now why I was able to sell them was that all, there was so much information buyers needed to reassure themselves it was a good investment to buy. And it really had very little to do with the property. It had everything to do with what rent you could get, uh, who would rent yeah. it, um, and having enough information to support that. Now especially with commercial property, there's very little data, but the most powerful thing, like there are a lot of them, most people who buy commercial are investors, in my view, like 80% are probably investors, they own occupier. Therefore, they really, it's an empty shell. There's not much to look at with the property. They just want to know who would rent it. And yeah. by being local, I could be like, well, I just leased these three shops. He's moving out. They need a new property. And simultaneously, you're showing the asset for rent as well. Gives the buyer confidence. And because that buyer knew you're like, we're there, we're not just talking shit to get the deal because we're in this, this marketplace. They, they, they take it a lot more trustworthy. One, you've done deals in the past. So you've got that sort of uh, authority check box. Two, you're not going to be selling it and never seen it again. You're, you're there. So they just yes. feel like it's, a, it's very honest and transparent. Um, but most importantly, we've got the people to go into the property because it's our local market. I know who needs to extend their bakery. I know who's an accountant moving. It's just, we offered that. And that's what we, that's what the buyers needed to tick it across, which is hard to and quantify. Absolutely. To, and Michael, I know. think for, as a seller, they, they had a really nice insurance policy that they covered local. And as a seller, they had a really nice insurance policy that they covered international. But on the flip side, I think you could say that 
they also wasted some of their time and some of their money to sell up. And um, because to have two agents reporting to you as regular mm. as we do, to have two agents spending your marketing money, like all their advertising bills were effectively double. Double. Because they had to, um, whatever they did for those guys had to do for, uh, for us. Yeah. And not only that, the signal that went out to the buyers, well, I guess you can say because we did the line, the 99% share of sales, I guess you could say that we we were quite effective in our selling, mm. in our selling, or the most effective in our selling processes. Now, the buyers that they were coming across were not dealing with the most effective agent. So yeah. if we took if we took 150 inquiries and they took 150 inquiries or 50 or 100 or whatever yeah. they took, they were not dealt with as effective as as we dealt with them because we were the closers. The local yeah. agent were the closers. So I could. We're well, not even almost, just closer. We were the fountain of knowledge sort of thing and like and that equaled the close like there was a hundred buy or whatever this scenario was there's yeah. half your buyers which you paid good money for marketing just not getting the information needed to to close the deal big time so the message today guys is if particularly with commercial properties if you can yeah. choose international you can choose local go with the strong local and I, mm. it may even extend across to franchising and, and independent agencies probably another session to talk about, but yeah. we've seen a massive move in Australia, a huge move in Australia where agencies are moving away from national brands, yeah. brands like um, uh, Hookers, uh, Ray White, Rain and uh, McGrath, Rain and, Rain and Horns. They've moved away from their international brands. And, you know, it, again, when I talk about perceived value, these these operators that have moved away um, uh we're, we're beating the drum of how good's our, our franchise. We mm. get agents from local networks, and then three months later, we get we get buyers from all over Australia, and then mm. three months later, they've opened up their own brand. You know, yeah. so uh, you know, it's uh, pretty interesting that there's a movement away from the national. There's a huge movement away from um, international and national franchising. Well, you know what, Mark? I find it ironic. Like people, they build the. When we know there's two franchise groups, let's just say Manly and DY, and they don't even communicate, I don't see how a franchise group will communicate from Sydney to Hong Kong. Like, it's um, it's quite uh, intriguing that sort of that perception be reality. Even yeah. another one with uh, internal splits for sales agents, where Mark, we had in a presentation the other day where. The way we run is virtually like an open listing once it's been in get once you've engaged Novak. So it's almost like a 50 50 split where you're not getting one agent, you're getting every agent can sell each other's stock. So it's a really, really good co competitive environment. All buyers can see everything. Other, and where I bring that in, because some other agencies, franchise say they do that, but it's only like a 10% referral. Now, the money doesn't match the motivation to to show each other's property so it doesn't really happen so there's um that perceived to be reality is a big one with the there's no real agents. team okay, they're, but, they're, they're yeah. independent operators there's no real team working for you and not only that you're paying you're paying 10 or 20 percent or more to the franchise for yes i don't think much so yeah. I, I, well, think, I think as an opera, as, as a, cons, as a consumer of real estate services, whether it's property management or sales, I think people. Are, I'm just losing a bit of audio. Because yeah, it's customer no. or they're getting less uh, because of the franchise thing. I think we'll finish it up there. Hey, you've just cut out Mark. Yeah. I've lost you on Insta girlfriend. Mark, you there? Can you hear me? I've lost yep. Mark, guys, so I'm just giving... All yeah, good, guys. Okay, I, done here. Up. Oh, I got you back. All right, mate. Well, I think that's a take. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, that's the difference between uh, national commercial agents and local commercial agents from yeah. our perspective. I'd be yes. interested in if, um, if there was any um, inter if there was any major, friend, major international commercial agent that wanted to give their perspective. Happy to have them online as well. On yeah, happy to see that. their feedback, how they use it as well. Um, yeah. Happy to join in. But this will be pod there's a link to our podcast with over 100 uh, episodes, lots of knowledge there. Feel free to tune in, listen to it. Uh, we'll YouTube this content as well. And we'll be back tomorrow morning for another topic. Once again, guys, if there's anything you want us to talk about, 
let it DM us. We're happy to. If you see an article and you say, I'd like to know more about that, click it to the article. We'll review it and give you our take on it. We're here. Love that you guys tune in all the time. All good. Done. Thanks, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.